For at TV, the world is thinking. There was a poignant moment in my life when I knew that I had to come to Google. And uh, I was out having lunch. I have, I have some small children. I have one small child. At the time, she was four. Her name is Samantha. We call her Tiger. And we were out having lunch uh, with another couple who had children. And as any of you who are parents know, uh, you typically isolate the children on one side of the table so the adults can have a conversation, and that's what we did. We were talking. And my friend asked me a question, and I didn't know the answer. So I said, Mike, you know, I, I don't know. And just at that moment, my four-year-old little girl, Tiger, uh, from the other end of the table where all the children were, spoke up and said, Daddy, where's your phone? And all of us turned and looked because she didn't know how to dial a phone. She didn't even know her own phone number. And my wife, you know, asked her, you know, Samantha, what do you need a phone for? And I told her, I accidentally left my phone in the car. And she said, Daddy, where's your phone? And then it hit us. All of us adults at the table, it dawned on us what was going on. She overheard me tell my friend Mike, uh, I don't know, when he asked me a question. And in her brief four years of life, watching her dad, she assumed that any time you didn't know a, uh, an answer to a question, why you brought out your phone and you Googled the answer. That's what her dad did. And so for her, the phone was the ultimate answering machine. Not, not the answering machine of yeah, our yeah. generation, but that if, if knowledge was available, you should be able to get to it from a phone. And at that moment, I realized that I had spent most of my adult life working to put a personal computer on every desktop in every home at Microsoft. And it occurred to me that there was a fundamental shift going on and that through mobile and Google, we were going to make the world's information accessible and useful to everybody. Now, there's something really interesting there about the, not only about how we learn from the next generation, but also about how phone to you meant Google. Um, and it says something about the phone is no longer just a device. It's a cloud-connected device. Absolutely. And in my, my keynote uh, on Wednesday, I talked about Google Mobile App. Uh, and, yeah, thank and, you. Yeah, and, and I talked about this idea of the sensor-based platform connecting to cloud applications. Now, I know you've seen the, my riff on that because it's basically a result of conversations that you know, we've had. Uh, but can you kind of reflect on that in your own mind? How does the phone and the cloud work together? And, and you know, why does Daddy Where's Your Phone suggest you know, the cloud? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. So, First of all, I think we have to recognize that when we build software for phones, that this is not the same model as we did on the PC. The mobile phone has some unique attributes, and we've got to take advantage of that. So for example, you know, this device has eyes, it's got a camera, it's got ears, it's got a microphone, it's got a skin, you can touch it, and it knows your location. And so software has to really take advantage of those attributes. And what we did with Google Mobile App, uh, this is the app you can download on your iPhone uh, or your BlackBerry, which we just, just released for the BlackBerry. Uh, we take advantage of those unique characteristics. We know your location. Uh, we take advantage of the mic. You can just say, best Italian restaurant in connected to New York. Or you can say, flowers. And we know you're in San Francisco. And we'll give you a flower shop right down, down yeah. the street. And so combining these data sources that you referenced, location, yeah. Google search, uh, and, and other things. For example, recently we've added the ability for you to add your friends as a data source. Yeah. So you can visualize your friends. Um, and so these things so, are important.